I, I can't do these intros, I'm sorry. Um, it's the second part of the Blackwell series. Uh, if you haven't seen the first one yet, you can go to my YouTube channel where you can see us play the Blackwell Legacy. Uh, this is the second part in that series by What Jedi. I. Um, something of an outlier, this one. It's the second uh, part of the five-part series. Uh, but this one actually um, actually goes against uh, the convention a little bit in to the to the degree that there was one this early on in the series. Uh, but we're not going to be playing with uh, Rosangela this time. Uh, you might see that that is not Rosangela. Um, uh, instead, we're going to be playing as Rosangela's aunt Lauren. Uh, so this is a prequel. So if the first game was something of a prologue, we're now jumping back in time to uh, see how uh, her Aunt Lauren basically did what Rosangela starts doing in the first game. So, this, all, this game also introduces uh, the, what I would say is probably the main uh, game mechanic of this series, which actually isn't in the first game, and I'll show you that very soon, because that, that appears very early on in the game. Um, this game is also one of the more darker ones. Um, Oh, hello. Oh, hello, ten tiny kittens. Hello. Meow, meow. We got a TTK raid and Arkrats in the chat. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. We were literally just about to get started. Uh, we're going to be playing Blackwell Unbound. I was just about to do a little, uh, little content warning here. Uh, so this one is a little bit more violent than the, um, the first game. There's going to be... Uh, there's going to be murder in this one. Uh, the first one was pretty dark in places, but I would say that this one goes a little bit further. Uh, obviously, if death and hauntings and ghosts is something that is uh, potentially a trigger for you, then please watch with care. Um, but beyond that, I think we're about ready to get started. So let's uh, get cracking. Blackwall Unbound. Here we go. Uh, we can do the instructions. Might as well. Infinity. I've been told it's beautiful, but I don't think it's anything special. But when you live like me, most things become quite ordinary. Life, death, tormented souls, it's all the same to me. Sometimes I wonder if anything will ever surprise me again. Sometimes I wonder if I even care. So this is kind of a cool little contrast with Rosangela, who uh, in the first game literally gets started uh, with this whole thing. She gets introduced to this world. Uh, she meets Joey. When we meet, when we pick up with Lauren here, she's been doing this for so long that she's completely jaded at this point. Uh, and I kind of like that. It's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting contrast. We were talking about jazz earlier before the uh, the official start of the stream. Uh, cool as barred, my little town is a jazz club. Hell yeah, that is cool. And stay out. Oh hey, you know I don't like that. What's your beef anyway? I am not talking to you. Oh promises, promises. So what's next on the list? What's next? The music balcony. is too loud. Okay. Why? Are you gonna throw yourself over and. Right, let me deal with that. I'll, I'll bring it down a little bit. Join me? No, I'm happy. Thank you for letting me know. Great, you want a cigarette. What am I supposed to do? You can do whatever the hell you like. Is that sounding better? Just one. Then I can get on with this. Yeah, I think we know. So this is the main gameplay mechanic that is going to be uh, uh, consistent throughout this entire series. We can now switch and play as Joey. We couldn't do that in the first game, which makes sense because Joey was only introduced about halfway through. But in this game, we can control him. You can go up here, you can switch up to Lauren, you can switch to him. Uh, and he can't do much. Boy, well, if I could can't look at it, stuff. that would sure be great. I have no interest in that thing. Some kind of recording device. She babbles into it every morning. 
Also interesting uh, in this game is that this is the only game in the series that doesn't have character portraits when uh, a character is speaking. I recognize this one from the uh, the first game, this Look uh, how picture. Young she was. She's got to be 18, 19. It's been over 10 years. Oh, look, it's her. Good old Patricia Blackwell, also known as Cleopatra, Queen of Denial. That seems That's fine, good. As long as you can hear the voices. That's Jack, her kid brother. He's alright, I guess. If I'd known I could be photographed, I would have shown my good side. Man, that is an old coat. I think soldiers wore it during the Civil War. If uh, we got any of the TTK raiders in uh, still, uh, what were you what were you all playing? And did it go well? Thank you so much for the raid once again. Really appreciate oh, it. Oh look, it's the couch. Every night I get to watch her snore on that thing. Kind of a kind of a square couch. Doesn't seem particularly. Uh, oh look, another ashtray. Tackiest thing I ever saw. That thing is deader than, well, me. The local rag. Well, we can just kind of look around, but let's uh, hey, get what? on with it. It's a direct question, roundabout insult, apology. Why the heck are you so mad? You honestly don't know. I have no idea. Typical. If you don't know, I'm sure as hell not going to tell you. Roundabout insult. Now we have direct insult as well. You done moping, or do you want to grind your teeth some more? Christ, Joey, can't you just leave it for one minute? Look, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Yeah. Exactly. Take another drag of that cigarette, darling. You get real ugly when you stop smoking. Oh, is that right? Well, ugly am I? <laughs> Take it easy, dear. It was just a little joke. A joke, yeah. I'm a riot. Like today, when those pipes burst. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is, is that what's got you in such a guff? I got soaked, and you just laughed. Well, it was funny. It was cold and wet and slimy. <laughs> it wasn't funny. <laughs> you should have seen the look on your face. The way you jumped up and down and ran in circles, squealing. <sighs> Still wasn't funny. If you say so. Oh, smoking indoors. Okay, I'm finished. Let's get on with this. There's a few I things thinking we about haven't it. checked, right? Yes, <clears throat> I've got the list right here. Well, yada let's yada. check it. Every other case today has been a false alarm. Maybe this will be an easy night. It won't be an easy night, Joey. Uh, but I was thinking about smoking indoors the other day, and I just remember in the 90s, uh, every single house you went into, because people were smoking so much, there was just like this gross film of just like, like kind of oil almost, because like people were just smoking all the time, and it just got on every single surface, and it's kind of like ash and oil and dust everywhere. Ooh, nasty. I don't even know why I talked about hey, that. Kid, Sorry. <laughs> yes. Hey, I'm gonna chat you with something Lark different a bit. with your hair. What do you mean? I don't know. Something's different. I washed it this morning. With shampoo? Yeah. That's what threw me. All right, let's get on with it. Yeah. Righty, we're gonna switch over to Lauren, and uh, she's got stuff. We've got her cigarette. We've got a lighter. We've got a cigarette pack, and we've got a case list. Ugh. Every one of these leads has been a dead end. Just two more to go, and we can call it a night. I remember getting home from a shift work in the nightclub before the smoke came by my hair stank of stale smoke. Yeah, it was just kind of a per so persistent, like up until uh, the smoking ban and up until, like, it was just, it feels like more people use the smoke as well in general. And I just like, to me, the smell of smoking, the smell of tobacco is like, it really reminds me of my childhood because that was like the persistent, uh, that's, that's just the persistent smell that I can remember. We got a couple of cases this here. One looks promising. Residents have reported strange music on the promenade late at night. Nobody knows where it comes from. Oh a God, development case. corporation has halted construction after a series of accidents. Probably nothing, but worth checking out. Right, we check them out. We will. My television. It's the latest model. It's my phone. That's the phone ashtray. 
for when I'm on the phone. The kitchen ashtray for when I'm cooking or watering a plant. It's my Polaroid. We grabbed a camera, I think. There Got we can. It. It's my phone, but. We grab that. No, we can look stuff up, but we can't grab it just yet. There's no entry. F I'll clean up later. We've already looked through. We don't need any more leads. Well, someone smokes in a car is basically ruined forever. Yeah, it is. Like I'll there is some. Up later. It just it just gets into every single kind of fabric and material. But this feels very much like I wasn't alive in the seventies. But this feels like a late eighties, early nineties thing of just having cigarettes and ashtrays everywhere. I remember that day. I was in college and visiting home for Christmas. I had a pack of cigarettes in my back pocket. Nobody noticed. Patricia Blackwell, my mom. She was a medium like me, but it drove her insane. I guess Joey has that effect on people. Jack Blackwell, my brother. Haven't seen him in years. He's now living with his fiance Maria. Good for him. Hmm. There he is, the family legacy. All right, let's get going. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. <clears throat> so, let's go to the promenade. Hmm. Looks like another bus, Joey. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe not. Wait, you hear that? I think so. Let's get closer. We're talking about jazz, so that seems appropriate. Looks like our evening might not be a total wash after all. Yep, yeah, so we've got, we can look in the notebook, and that works the same as in the last game. Hey, mister. Yep. Yeah. Nice tune. You write it yourself? Ugh. Can switch to Joey. That's a pretty nice instrument you got there. Mind if I have a look? Hey, Mac, the name's Joey. Ah, the talkative sort, are we? Well, we'll soon sort that out. So, nice night, huh? <laughs> hey, do you feel restless? Like you've got somewhere to go but don't know where? It means you're dead, Mac. Can you even hear me? Every single spirit in every single game in this series, you can just tell them that they're dead and it never, ever works. Which I like. It's a running gag. I like that. Hey, you got a cigarette? I could sure use one. I'll be back, pal. Don't you worry. It's just his saxophone. Hey, I'm to grab talking, it. Buster. Hey! hey. You let, let go. go! I'm Joey. Pleasure to meet you. I don't, I don't care, care who you are. Nobody, Nobody interrupts, interrupts my set. set. Just what are you doing here? What am what I doing? doing? What, what do, do you, you think, think I'm, I'm doing? doing? Get, Get away, away from, from me, me, man. I need to ask you a few questions first. Not nah, now, now, man. man. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? We are also in the middle of Get something, off man. The stage. Stage? Ow! That's, That's how we how treat your kind at Johnny Ivory's. Johnny Ivory's? What are you talking about? Hello? Oh, we did get a clue. A sharp tack here. We did get a little clue. Oh, yeah. We need to go to Lauren to do the notebook. That ghost mentioned Johnny Ivory's. Google your connection. Queensboro Bridge it connects Manhattan to Queens. The this particular screen, I remember in the developer commentary, they mentioned that this is one of the few uh, backgrounds that isn't actually based on a real location. They just wanted to have the bridge in the background, but you can't see the bridge from the location where this actually is in New York. Apparently, all other backgrounds are based on real locations, but they just kind of wanted it to look cool. That's some view. I can even see the New World Trade Center from here. Oh. Well. 
We did get a name, so we're gonna... This is one issue that I have with this game, is that there is a lot of going home and uh, checking the phone book. So I believe that's what we need to Johnny do. Johnny Ivory's Jazz and Cabaret. It's on Bleecker and 7th Avenue. You up for some jazz, Joey? You mean we finally get to listen to some real music? <laughs> Just stuff. like in real life, indeed, yes. Exactly like in real life. And also, hello. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. How are you doing? You doing okay? We're gonna visit Johnny Ivory's. This does look pretty cool. Gotta admit. Hmm. This one looks interesting. The only thing holding up that dress is fate. Pretty girl, though. I wonder who she is. Procrastinating and reading. How are you? Oh well, I'm. That's uh, him. The Jasmine goes from the. Pretty bottom. good. Looks like we're on the right track. I'm pretty good. I uh, I mentioned this before. I think the stream started properly. Uh, managed to get my prescriptions today. I went shopping. I uh, did my exercise. I. I did stuff. I managed to be productive today, so I, I feel good. The woman is blocking the piano player. I can't see his face. Courtesy of Jambalaya Records. Hmm. Might be worth checking out. <laughs> I did get. I did go to uh, charity shopping the other day. Actually, I did. Um, we've been talking a little bit in a couple of previous streams about my uh, vinyl record buying habits, and I did actually buy some more vinyl records the other day. No, we already saw that one. But yeah, so we can tie that guy to this place. There really isn't a lot of people here, I don't know though. much about pianos, but it seems nice enough. He seems to be enjoying himself, even though there's nobody here to listen to him. I got... Thank you for asking. I got... Oh. I got this, Pink Moon by Nick Drake, which is a fantastic, uh, almost entirely acoustic uh, record, which is amazing. And I got this, uh, which is Chiptune, Swedish Chiptune by a band called Pluxus. Uh, so two kind of, it's two... Quite, uh, polar opposites in a way, but uh, that was, I was really happy to get that one because um, I used to listen a lot to uh, Chip Tune back, like back in my teenage years, um, and that was just in like I think I paid like two pounds for it or something, and it's in really good condition. Hey, Mister. Yes. Got a minute? For a pretty thing like you, I got seven. Ooh, smooth voice. You hear such a sad smooth voice. We all know that I'm a, a sucker for a, a deep voiced, uh, hunky piano player. I just love music. Well, how about that? I just happen to make music. It's a match made in heaven. And Lauren, what's your name? Pleasure is all mine, Lauren. You. <coughs> See. See. You got it, sister. Uh, Manuel makes a very good point here. It's a shame that Nick Drake didn't get any success when he lived. Yeah, he died very young, unfortunately. He released three really good albums. I would say Pink Moon is my favorite. Because um, I think it suits his, uh, his style more uh, than the other two. But I like all three of them. And then, yeah, I think he died when he was... Oh, he wasn't even, he was definitely in his 20s. He was very young. It's a very sad story. Um, Is that C like the water? That's C like the chord. It's the first chord I played, and you never forget your first. Oh my god, That's so true. smooth. So smooth. Do you know any other musicians? I do run in those circles, yeah. Any of them play here? Sometimes we get major gigs here. But me, I'm what you call the dependable type. These fingers can go all night long. Can they now? Oh, jeez, make him stop. <laughs> what I like about this is that the, the sense that I get is that Lauren is enjoying this, not so much for the actual flirting, but for the fact that it makes Joey uncomfortable. 
Which as a, as a character beat between the two of them, I love. It's okay for me to talk to you like this. I don't hear anybody else complaining. Dull night, huh? You could say that. But I think it just got a bit more interesting. Is that right? Well, these lips don't lie. What's the band in that photograph behind you? That picture is old, sister. It's not that old. Old enough. Before my time is on. Do you have a copy of that photograph anywhere? Nope. Sorry. I'm looking for info about a musician. Well, I'll try to help you out. Who is he? I don't know his name. I think he's a sax player. I know lots of sax players, sister. Big guy, kind of chubby, has a beard. Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. Okay, not much help. Victoria started getting noticed after Kate Bush said that she was inspired. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I actually didn't know Zero. that they had a connection. Uh, but now we can switch over to Joey. He's a swinger past his prime. Not bad on the piano, though. I just wish he'd keep his eyes on the keys. What am I supposed to do? Blow in his ear? He's not really my type. <laughs> hmm. Sounds a bit out of tune. How am I supposed to have to face facts? My piano playing days are long gone. Uh, that's that's what we need to look Just at. Just some sheet music, nothing special. Oh, I thought that's where we were meant to look at that. Oh. It's his sheet music. He's barely looking at it. He must know the song by heart. I can't just take the sheet music. That would be rude. Yeah, you can. Oh well, we did get a little hint there because we saw, we heard about Jambalaya Records. So it's time to walk all the way across town. Well, to every fair, it looks pretty close. But we're gonna walk all the way home. We're gonna look at the phone book again. Oh no, we're gonna answer the phone first. There's no. Lauren, Lauren, it's Jack. Lauren, I know you're there. I'm your brother. For God's sake, talk to me. Yeah. A little call back to the first game now. Uh, Lauren is avoiding his brother. His brother, her brother. Jambalaya. Did this remind me a little bit when you said that about catering, Jambalaya publishing, Jambalaya's used cars. Don't interrupt you, Lauren. Sorry. Did um, this remind me that I did read that apparently a big factor in the Velvet Underground. Uh, sort of became reappraised um, was because R.E.M. Uh, started talking about them being an influence and R.E.M. I believe even did a couple of, of covers it's funny how that uh, funny how that goes we're gonna do what was it Jambalaya Records wasn't it Jambalaya Records here we go Jambalaya Records 240 Essex Street I'll jot that down right And out we go. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. That is way away. But it looks like the place we got jazz on the door. He looks pretty hard at work. Good evening. Good evening to you. I'm Dwayne. Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping you could help me. I'll do my best. What can I do for you? So what is this place? This? This is a music agency. We manage bands, do promotions, things like that, you know? Well, by we, I really mean me. You do this all by yourself? Yep. One-man operation. That's me. What sort of music do you manage? Mostly jazz and reggae. Nobody famous. Most small timers have trouble getting the uh, sound design the here. A little bit. The music is overpowering the dialogue a little bit. Sessions, you know, the basic stuff that musicians don't want to deal with. But we get to gist. Yeah, I suppose I am. I learned to work musician hours, you know. You play a gig at night and have a problem? You want someone to call? Your clients have lots of problems, do they? Don't get me started. I'm 
looking for a sax player. Well, I can definitely help you there. You looking for a standee? I just remember that we long forgot long. to do something, so we're gonna oh, have to no, leave and come sorry. back. I'm not with a band. I'm looking for a specific sax player. Well, if he's a client of mine, I can help you. What's his name? That's the problem. I don't know. But he's in a photograph that your company took. Really? Can I see it? I don't have it. Then I don't know what to say. Yeah, we need to. Thanks for the help. I might be back later. No problem. Yes, we will be back later. We gotta go and take a picture of the picture. Which I, uh, like a silly person, forgot to do. So we're going back to Johnny Ivory. We're gonna take the camera. We're gonna take the picture. It's the photo from Johnny Ivory's. Here we go. I think with a little bit like with Legacy, this game does start a little bit slow. Um, it does uh, get better later. But I think them? this is a little bit oh, of a, yeah. a slow start. I remember those guys. The C Sharps. The C Sharps. Yeah, I used to manage them. You used to manage them. But not anymore? Nah. Been about eight, ten years. Time flies, you know? Okay. Hi again. Hi yourself. Again. Hey, can you come with me to Johnny Ivory's? I'll show you that photograph I told you about. I wish I could, you know, but I have a ton of work to do. Maybe another time? Yeah, sure. What can you tell me about the Sea Sharks? Oh, they were strictly lounge jazz, you know, but I saw them doing more. They really gelled, you know? Gelled? In tune with each other. And that lady had a voice like velvet. What happened to them? Don't know. They disappeared. Got them a few gigs and cut a record and that was it. Guess they just moved on or just broke up. <laughs> it happens, you know. Oh, it was cold today. Ah. Thanks for it was really help. warm here today, funny enough. No problem. I was wearing um, I was wearing a long sleeve t-shirt and I went out and I regretted doing that. It was actually it was actually a little bit too hot for that. I had to wear long johns. Well, long john sweater is coming up. I did buy uh, I did buy myself some um, extra warm leggings, <laughs> and I've got long johns as well. Should I need it? Right, back to Johnny Ivory's again. Hey, C. Hello there. Ooh, we've got something to ask you about. Do you know anything about the C sharps? The C sharp? Nah, nah, I've never heard of them. Huh. See you around. Anytime, sister. You never heard of the band whose picture you were literally sitting in front of? Sure. Sure, man. Oh boy, oh. we've got company. Hmm. Can you see? Pardon? Can't you see? See what, lady? The whole of the world. Connection. Patterns pulsing with life everywhere. Oh, great. One of New York's finest crazies. Do something about this old bat, will you? Do you want money? Because I don't have any. How about a cigarette? Fool! Liar! Can't you see? Um. Useless. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Useless! Useless. Wow. I know. Only in New York. Yeah, I think it probably is a, a Simpsons reference. Oh, we need Joey for this one, don't we? I'll Actually, no, we don't need because we need to uh, start showing the picture. Hey, do you recognize this photograph? Hello? Nice try, sweetheart. But I think a more direct approach is required. Let's try with Joey, don't Hello again. I said, I said let, go let go of that. that. <sighs> Tell me about the C sharps. What are you, what are you crazy? crazy? Get, Get out of here. here. Get, Get out of here. here. Ow! 
Come on now. Hello again. Yes, I said hello. let go of that. You can do this all night. I'm gonna talk to you and you're gonna listen. Or so help me, I'll take this sex and shove it right up your... Give me that! Hmm. Why are you haunting this place? Huh? What are you talking about, man? You're crazy! Get off before security gets you! Get out of here! Okay. Ow! Huh. Hey, do you recognize this photograph? Hello? Nice try, sweetheart. But I think a more direct approach is required. Well, we've done the direct approach, but I think, yeah, maybe there's something else we need to do. Let's exit. Ow. Ow. Right, I uh, think maybe we go back. So I think we need to get this guy to spill the beans. Somehow. Just some sheep. Nothing special. What am I supposed to- he's not- Hey, C. Hello there. About that sax player. Yeah? He's in that photo behind you. Is he now? Yeah. Do you know him? That picture is old, sister. It's not that old. Old enough. Before my time is all. Don't know who that is. Sorry. I don't believe you. Are you sure you don't know anything about the C-Sharps? There's a picture of them right behind you. Lots of pictures appear on that wall. I just work here. I don't know its entire history. Now, you mind? I got a gig to finish. See your- It's a little bit, uh... The promenade goes a little bit more chilly with us now. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, so if you missed the first one, this this is going to be kind of a, uh, there's a little bit of lore here you need to know. But basically, we're playing as a spirit medium, uh, whose job it is to help uh, ghosts pass on to the next world. Uh, and we have our spirit guide, which is Joey, which is the floating guy in a fedora, uh, who helps us do that. And we're the only people who can see the ghosts, so we can interact with them. But uh, most of them don't know that they're dead, so we have to convince them to be able to move on, basically. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the ghost on the promenade, the sax player, to realize that he's dead so that we can send him on to the next. The, the endless big unknown, basically. I'm just looking now. Uh... There we go. What do we have here? He's written something at the top of the sheet. Property of Cecil Sharp. That was it, because I tried to do that before, but I couldn't sweet. do it before. Maybe his mommy signed it for him. That was the thing, because I tried to do that before, but I think we hadn't triggered the thing that let us do it, basically. Um... Now, the interesting thing about this game is it's the second game in the series. Well, I don't know why we left. We're meant to still be here. Um, but this was actually meant to be part of what later became the third game. Uh, this was meant to be a flashback sequence in the third game. But because that game was taking so long to develop, they decided to cut this bit into its own uh, standalone game. Which is why it kind of feels like it's... Um, it's it's a little bit of an oddball in the series. Cecil Sharp, the C Sharps. Cute, real cute. Hey, C. Hello there. Were you ever in a band called the C Sharps? What makes you think that? Um, just the name, C Sharp, Cecil Sharp. It's a pretty strong coincidence, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I guess. So, what's your answer? No. <laughs> okay, helpful, thank you. <laughs> See you around. Anytime, sister. Maybe can we do we need to combine these as well? The promenade ghost once played in a band called the C Sharps. 
All right, no, that's all we got. Okay, you have to sleep. Well, thank you for popping in. I uh, hope you have a good night's sleep. And thank you so much for joining as always. It's always very appreciated. Let's, uh, can we talk? Actually, I think we're gonna have to. Let's look up uh, old Cecil. When I head home again. I think we're gonna try. And try calling Jack for one. Hello? Hello? Lauren, is that you? Sis? Jesus. Now, why'd you go and do that? Just back off, okay? Alright, alright. This is me backing off. Good. What kind of spelling was that? Yes, there's a Cecil Sharp listed. Just a number, no address. I don't know if this helps us, but let's try it. No answer. Uh, figured. I want to talk to you, Joey. What's the deal? So, do you think Cecil Sharp was really in a band called the C-Sharps? You can bet on it. Any thoughts on our sax playing ghost? No more than you, darling. He likes his music, that's for sure. I doubt we'll get anything useful from him. Huh, that's we need to figure out his yeah, we'll name. Talk more like I don't remember how we're doing that. I apologize, I should really be more prepared for these. Come on, let's get out of here. But we get, to, we get to experience the joy of uh, bumbling around uh looking for the missing clue as if it was the first time let's talk to um Dwayne again hi again hi yourself was Cecil Sharp in the band the C Sharps Cecil Sharp C Sharps yes I knew I heard the name from somewhere. So do you remember him now? Ooh. Oh, yeah, he was the band leader. A genius on the piano. There we go. So Cecil Sharp was in the band The C Sharps. Yeah, that was definitely him. What was the sax player's name? Ah, uh, well, it was a long time ago. Oh, come on. I'm not much on individual names. I just remember the band. I only deal with the leader, you know? Uh, Thanks for the... I might be back later. No problem. Well, well, well. We're really going... really getting an exercise walking around New York at night. We once again need to talk to you because we've now got confirmed that you were in the hey, sea trips. Hello there. I want to talk to you about the C Sharps. I said. I know what you said. And I know that you're lying. So shut the hell up and listen. I Ooh. spoke to your old manager. He confirmed who you are. You spoke to Dwayne? Yes, I did. That. Fine. You got me. Yes. I used to run a band called the C Sharps. It was a rotten time in my life, and I'd just as soon forget it. Why are you stirring up these old ashes, huh? I have my reasons. Yeah, sure you do. Not so smooth anymore, are you? About that sax player. Yeah. He's in that photo behind you. So I know he's with the C Sharps and that you know him. What is this? You from that damn magazine? Magazine? The New Yorker. You a reporter? No. So who is he? You just don't quit, do you? You want to know <laughs> so badly? His yeah. name is Isaac Brown. There Isaac we go. Brown? Yes. You happy now? Ecstatic. Great. <laughs> Not really, <laughs> not really uh, so flirty anymore. What but there can you, go. you tell me about Isaac Brown? Him? He's a bum, a drunk, a nobody, a lowlife. Yeah, whatever. He's also dead. And how did he die? Someone strangled him to death with his bare hands. Isaac must have squealed like a pig. You don't seem very upset by this. No, but last time someone asked about Isaac, it was some reporter from The New Yorker. He came along, asked his questions, then bam! Isaac's dead. Really? 
Yeah. Hmm. So forgive me if I don't take kindly to pushy questions. Who is the Interesting. Reporter? I don't know. Mitchell something? Slow talker. Drove me crazy. You think he killed Isaac? I just played the piano. I don't think anything. Especially <laughs> not. I just played the piano. I don't Isaac, think anything. The son of a bitch had it coming. So please, just get out of here. Ooh, clearly not happy. About Isaac Brown. Leave it, lady. The past is dead, gone, and buried. Alright. See you later. Yeah. Very short of us right now, but we got a lot of stuff we wanted. Uh, nope. Oh, didn't mean to go back here. So we've got a lead on the New Yorker, we've got a name, and we've got a lead on a reporter called Mitchell. So let's, uh, start with the New Yorker. Yep, there's a listing for the New Yorker. Their main office is in Midtown. Thank you for calling the New Yorker. How can I help you? Hello, yes. I'm trying to reach a reporter named Mitchell. Let's see now. Mitchell, Mitchell. We have a Joseph Mitchell on staff. Is that him? I guess it's worth a try. Is he in? Yes, he is. Hold, please. He's not answering. Maybe right. I should go up there in person. Right. We'll head up to the New Yorker. Now, this actually I do think is a little bit Come interesting. On, let's get out of here. Right behind you. We're gonna head to the New Yorker. It's pretty close. Yes. Can I help you? Are you Mr. Mitchell? I sure am. I'm Lauren Blackwell. Well, do come in, Miss Blackwell. Well, you know, we're gonna talk. We'll, we'll talk to Mr. Mitchell for a little bit before I start blabbering. Let's uh, get you right to, to the point. Questions. Well, there's no harm in asking, certainly. What is this regarding? Are you a reporter, or...? No. An independent investigator. I see. So you're not with the police. Would it matter if I was? No, it wouldn't. So what can I do for you, Miss Blackwell? So how long have you been working here? Do you always ask such personal questions? I'm just curious about the sort of work you do. I write about people, Miss Blackwell. What sort of people? Not the famous sort. Just ordinary people, like you or me. Ordinary people, like me. You find that amusing? Oh, not at all. And we'll talk I'd about like Isaac to talk Brown. About Isaac Brown. Ah, Isaac. You knew Isaac. Sort of. Yes. I'm looking into his death. Really? That was almost five years ago. Why the sudden interest? Let's just say that I have a personal interest in clearing it up. Anything else you can tell me about Isaac? Why do you want to write about him? I don't want to go too in-depth. Out of respect, you understand? Sure. I was drawn to him for the same reasons I'm drawn to anybody I write about. I felt he had a story that could reach people, enrich them, perhaps learn from. Really? Miss Blackwell, spend some time talking to the poor and the downtrodden. Walk down the Bowery and speak to the half-wits and the have-nots. In one hour, you'll learn more from them than you would from a lifetime of school. So tell me about yourself, Mr. Mitchell. I beg your pardon? Tell me about yourself. Yes, I heard you. I hope you didn't come here simply to interview me. I'm afraid I'd make a poor interview subject. I think that's all for now. All right. You have a good night now. Now, uh, what I was going to blabber on about uh, is that Joseph Mitchell was actually a real person. Uh, and he was indeed a writer for The New Yorker. And, in fact, uh, I am currently uh, listening to a collection of his stories. Uh, the stories that was actually published in The New Yorker as well. Um, very, uh, very great good writer. Wrote uh, for, uh, about the uh, interesting eccentric people in New York during the sort of pre- and post-war uh, eras. Uh, fascinating guy. We're going to learn more about him, because that's not the last we see of him. Uh, but we are now... I think we're going to go back to the promenade.
think can we now? Hello again. I see. You're Isaac Brown, aren't you? What's, What's it to it you, man? So you are Isaac Brown? How do you know me? Get away! Get, away. Get, Get out of here! Yeah, clonk. Ow! We definitely oh, got an ID. I... What do you know about a reporter named Mitchell? Mitchell. Mitchell. I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure. He's, He's a, a nice, nice man. man. He, asked he asked me about, me about my life. life. He, he bought, bought me a me drink. drink. He gave, he gave me $10. $10. He... he... Hey! hey. What are you what doing on stage, on stage, man? Oh, here we go again. Get out of here! <laughs> Ow! I've got a little bit, but not much. Did we get everything? Did I do everything? Tough. Did I say all the all the questions? Yes. Here? Twice in one evening. Come on yep. in. Sit down. Well, like you're busy. So what was Isaac's story? There we go. I, I know he twice. played in a band called the Sea Sharks. Made that classic mistake. Went wrong. What was it? Listen, have you tried asking Mr. Sharp? Yes. He's not talking. I don't blame him. He's probably feeling guilty. Guilty? Mm. Why? He has his reasons. Could you, uh, I don't know, tell me what those reasons are? I can't do that. Of course he can't. <laughs> Come on. Mr. Mitchell, I need to know what happened. Listen, I don't like this. I don't feel comfortable talking about people without their consent. I won't say any more about Isaac or his sister. Sister? Sister? Uh, please, I'm not gonna say anymore. There we go. Who was Isaac's sister? I told you, not another word. I'd like to read your piece about Isaac. Uh, well, I'm afraid I can't help you there. I never published it. You didn't? No, it seemed a bit in bad taste. Since when do reporters care about bad taste? Since when do reporters care about <laughs> bad taste? Ah, uh, you don't have a high opinion of journalists, do you? Well, you hear things. Oh, no. Don't worry about it. I'm well aware of the stereotype. I have written about deceased persons before when I felt it was in the public's interest. But Isaac, well, I felt the man deserved some peace. If you felt his story could reach people, enrich them, as you say, why didn't you publish the story? Listen, Miss Blackwell, Isaac didn't just die. He was murdered. Someone reached around his neck and strangled the life right out of him. That puts a bit of a damper on the story I wanted to tell. So nobody will hear the story? All my notes on him have been destroyed. Isaac's story might not have reached the people, but it reached me. Maybe that's enough. I think I that's think, all for now. I all right. think that's all we need for right now. now. Ugh. We have quizzed him. Now we know about his sisters. We're gonna... We can start with... Because we can probably assume that the lady in the picture is the sister. Cecil? What? Very grumpy now. I need to speak to you about Isaac's sister. You fat it! You've crossed <laughs> the line, sister. It was fun for a while, but now it's time for you to leave. Okay. Ooh, now you've done it. What are you going to do, throw me out? Oh, is that a challenge? Don't tempt me, lady. Leave. Okay, this is me leaving you alone. You really have a way with the <laughs> fellas, kid. Ah, uh, don't sweat it. His bark is worse than his bite. Oh, it's you. We We've come a long way from s sweet talking to this. I really need to know about Isaac's sister. It's very important. Yeah, well, we all have problems. And my problem is you. So leave. I'll leave, but I'll be back. Oh, God. Well, God. that certainly worked wonders. 
We'll have to change our tactics if we want to get him to talk. I know that expression. Only time a man gets a look like that is when he's hung up over the wall. Go easy on him, huh? I think he cares more about that gal than he lets on. Look, it's Miss Wonderful. That's me. I'm like a bad penny. You want to forget the past, you say? Yeah. Then what's with the picture behind you? If you wanted to forget the past, why'd you keep the picture? I have my reasons. Leave it alone. Just leave me alone. I'll leave, but I'll be back. Uh, didn't work. <laughs> Ever think of moonlighting in PR? You're so good at talking to people. Seriously, whatever you're doing, you can't handle it this way. Yeah, old people you pleaser Joey. Up, do you? People you pleaser Joey gonna school us. You loved her, didn't you? Of course I loved her. She was our heart and soul. I would have... Damn you, woman. Damn you. I just want to play this piano and forget she ever existed. Why don't you just leave me alone? So what happened, see? It's very important that you tell me. All right, all right. I don't know who you are or why you're so interested, but you're never going to leave me alone, are you? No, I won't. You were in a band together, right? Yeah, we had a band. Smart girl. Then she died. Then he died. End of story. Mm, don't sass me. How did you meet Isaac's sister? First of all, her name was Sarah. I was looking to start a band, and I saw them perform together. She could sing like it was magic. Such energy, such life. A lot of sass such in this game. What was Isaac really like? That fat bastard. He was good on the sax, but that was the end of his good points. He drank, he was violent, he was useless in every other way. But Sarah could calm him down. She was the only one. If it wasn't for Sarah, I never would have kept him around. What happened to Isaac after Sarah died? He went to pieces. What do you think? Oh, he couldn't cope drank way too much, started fights during gigs. I tried to stick with him out of respect for Sarah, but let's face it, he was a big, dumb embarrassment. Hmm. What happened to Sarah? She got sick. Pneumonia or something. Started coughing one day and wouldn't stop. She got better after a while, but something happened to her voice. Doctor said she would never sing again. After that, the spark just went out. She hung on for a few months, but she just lost the will to live. Anything else you can tell me about Sarah? I love that woman. Even when she lost her voice, I would have given up everything for her. Heck, yeah, I pretty brutal. Let her brother live with us. I should have told her. About Sarah. I told you everything. Please, just stop. So you cut ties with Isaac? Completely. Told him he was a drunk and a low life and wasn't worth the peanuts I paid him. Which was, let's face it, totally true. What happened? <laughs> he beat me senseless is what happened. Knocked me out with the sacks I bought for him. Then he became a bum. Yeah, he does do that. the rest do of that. his life living on the streets of Roosevelt Island. Till he got killed by some drifter. About that reporter. I know nothing else about Southern guy. Talked real slow. Asked a bunch of questions. Just leave it, okay? Yeah, yeah, I think we've got everything we need. See you later. Yeah. You know, all this talk reminds me of something. Sarah and Isaac would always play this song. Really? Yeah, a duet at the end of every show. She'd sing and he'd play the saxophone? No, she'd actually play the piano, if you can believe it. She wasn't great, but she loved playing with Isaac. Isaac loved that silly song. They never let me join them, but that was okay. It was kind of sweet, in a way. Oh, well. Right, well... That sounds like it has some import. Evening, SVCJ. How are you doing? We're just helping ghosts. Because uh, we, we do remember that we had a recording device here. I guess I could take this along. Yes, we can. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. <clears throat> let's do a little bit of a let's create a little bootleg. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. Sarah. 
Cecil. What? What was the duet that Isaac and Sarah used to play? Oh, that. Not too bad, no luck back in from work. Isaac oh, fair enough. Long day. But Sarah's was always the same. With something like... After Sarah died, Isaac would play gigs, but refused to leave the stage. He'd blow on his sax, playing anything that came to mind. Feet planted like a statue. He'd just keep playing? He'd play forever if I didn't get four guys to drag him off. I think, I think he was waiting for Sarah to play with him. He was supposed to finish each show with her, and, well, in his heart, he refused to believe she was dead. See you later. Yeah. Can we... Why would I want to record... Why would I want... Cecil... What? Could you play that song again? Yeah, sure. Why not? There we go. I think I've recorded enough. Thank you. I should get back to my piano playing. I haven't done it for so long now. Is that I... The area of my flat that I used for piano practice is now my home office so I need to find a new space uh, but I would like to get back into it it's been a while <laughs> yeah they should have to be fair They really should have had to play it again, Sam. Like, fuck. Missed opportunity. Quite a scene, I think. How far did I get? Um, God, I can't remember. I was just starting to learn. Um, God, what was the last thing I did? I don't even remember now. I was getting pretty far in with uh, doing chords. I think double handed uh, chords was the last thing. Sis? Is that you, sis? I've been waiting for so long. No, Isaac, I'm not your sister. She couldn't come. No. No, she couldn't, could she? My sister's dead, isn't she? Yeah. Now I'm dead, too. Yeah. I knew that. Deep down, I knew that. I just couldn't let go. I'm sorry. Is that why you two are here? To help me let go? That's what we do best. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Don't worry. Just leave everything to us. Here, just take this. Yeah, same Whatever as, uh, same as last time. Hold on tight. This is the fun part. Hi, Isaac. Looking quite different from what I did in the first game. Yep, eternity, the white light, the passage into the next world. It is something all right. Still can't believe I'm dead. Crazy old lady, she killed me. Old lady? Says she why she want to go and do a thing like that? I'm sorry, I wish I knew. I don't think it matters anyway. It's time I join my sis. Just head into the light. Thanks. Head into the light. Tell, you, tell your friends sorry for the crap on the head. <laughs> right. There he goes. Another day, another spirit gone to their rest. Hmm. Rest. Well, that's a nice word. Oh. Uh. Joey? Yeah, hi. Glad you're up. You. Did you. Did you save him? Yeah, yeah, sure, we saved him. Joey? Is she talking to you? Yeah, go figure. Thank you, both of you. I only wanted to save them. Isaac told me he was killed by an old woman. Was that you? I save just like you. Who are yeah, you? uh, is right. Countess? Countess? Countess of what? It's the only name I know. The Countess. I saved them. 
I helped them. I... I'm sorry. Hey, get back here. Don't just stand there. Let's get after her. Yeah, she is, uh, not quite there. She's pretty spry for an old lady. Spry my foot? You couldn't outrun a one-legged turtle with those lungs. Don't start with me, okay? Well, one down, one to go. Because we had two cases on our list. I'm not moving from this spot until I've finished my cigarette. Hey there. Nobody that old should move that fast. Just keep telling yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> I do like their dynamic a lot. Joey, she could see you. How could she do that? I don't know. But I think this case just got a hell of a lot more complicated. Fantastic. Sure did. Sure did. Well, we had a second uh, case. So let us... Because uh, I think, was it 53rd and something? Heading off. Oh, thank you so much for the lurk. Really appreciate it. Uh, and have a lovely rest of your evening. Good time zone. Uh, right, 53rd and Lex, that was it. Always well, appreciate you being it. here. Yep. All's quiet so far. Hmm. Closed, locked, and barred. I'm not getting in this way. A thick wooden wall enclosing the construction site. Well, thankfully, we've got a ghost. All right, I'm going in to check it out. Stay close to the wall. Yeah, sure. Let me know what you find. So one of the uh, the rules that was established in the first game, which Hello? is going to become more important as it goes, Anyone is here? that Joey can only be so far away from uh, the uh, spirit. Well, what do you see? Is it clean? I'm afraid not. Well, hurry up then. I feel stupid pressed not up. Not from the spirit, the medium. Wall. Sorry. <laughs> the outlook goes, I can go stay. Hey there. Huh? Could someone, Could someone be, there? be there? Of course not. No one would be so rude as to enter without knocking. Oh. Hey, lady. I'm talking to you. No, the door is closed. Nobody is there. Only way okay. in is if I open the door. And to do that, drag the knock. <laughs> um, knock knock? What? <sighs> Nobody is there. The door is still closed and bolted. Oh my god. <sighs> I'll be back. Friggin' spooks. That's the way out of here. Hello out there. Joey? What are you doing in there? Miss me? Yeah, sure. Like I miss toe fungus. How's it going on the outside? Oh, it's a thrill a minute out here. Like a day at the circus. I need you to do something. What? <laughs> Hop on one leg. What? Why? I'll explain later. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> what did that accomplish? <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. I hate you so much. Trying to get rid of me, will they? Hello out there. Joey, what are you doing? I need you to do something. Hmm, it better be good. Knock on the gate door. Knock on the door? Why? I'll explain later, just do it. Yeah, total dickhead move. A knock. Joey is definitely a, a lovable a dickhead, visitor. I would say. Uh, just a minute. Is my hair okay? Yeah, it's fine. It'll have to do. Hello? Good God. Hello, miss. Hello? <laughs> to trust Can you I anymore. Help you? <laughs> I'm Joey Malone, miss. Well, Mr. Malone. Mr. To Malone. What do I owe the pleasure? What's your name? Excuse me? Your name? My name is on the door. If you don't know who no, I am, then why are you here? I'm a bit lost. Can you tell me where I am? Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. Are you looking for a specific apartment or... Apartment? You mean we're inside a building? Yes. Are you feeling all right, mister? You're not in a building, lady. Take a look around. I don't know what you're talking about. 
We're on the third floor. <laughs> Look, there's the elevator down the hall. Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, totally. All right, yeah, I see it. <laughs> Are you sure you're feeling all right? Yeah, we can tell her that she's dead, too. To tell you. Oh? See if that works. There's no delicate way to put this. You're dead. Pardon me? Dead and buried. You're a ghost haunting a wasteland. You're unbalanced. Tell me what you want before I call the police. I'd like to ask you some questions. Look, I've had enough. I'm not going to stand here and indulge in idle chit chat. Who of course are you? not. Of course not. Uh, let's say Gasman. With the gas company. I was sent to check your apartment for leaks. Didn't you come this morning? Uh. Yes, you did. You found nothing, and you charged me a fortune. That must have been someone else. You're not fooling me. You're one of them, aren't you? One of them? Oh. Who is them? Who is them? I told you all before, I am not leaving. The only way you can drag You're one of the non-binaries? Is as a corpse. You're one of the they-thems? Did I leave the gas on? <gasps> Shocking. Right, well, we can uh, explore a little bit in here. Cheap material. I want nothing to do with it. Just a bunch of drawers. <laughs> he never tries to provide evidence that they're dead. I think it could you try pointing to your shins for me it might go far. There are a couple of times where um, he does things like that, where he'll, he'll say something and they'll just, in the style of like a Sixth Sense ghost, they'll just like, they'll wave it away, they'll ignore what you say, or they'll like, they'll hand wave it. I see that spirit pacing back and forth out there. Just a fan. Just a fan. Just a bunch of drawers. I think we can Even look if I way. wanted to stick my head inside, which I don't, it would be too dark to see anything. Hmm. The name under the picture is Farrah Fawcett. I wonder if she likes dead guys. Well, she do be dead herself now, so who knows? Let's take a look, see. Dear Mr. Foreman, I was hoping you could help me. I have tried speaking to your boss, but he ignores my calls. The agreement, I believe, was $230 a month for five years. However, since the move, I have only been receiving $225 a month. Can you please send someone with the $60 that I am entitled to? I'd come myself, but it's hard for me to get around these days. Miss Harriet Sherman. Harriet Sherman. Mrs. Harriet Sherman. I have no idea who she is, but any lead is a good lead. Right, we've Harriet got something. Sherman. I have no got a name oh look an ashtray maybe the kid should get a job here I can't make heads or tails out of this thing hmm. I wonder does it want a hug no but there's a date circled I think maybe we need to look at that later it says Seagram Realty I guess they're the guys who own this construction outfit well we got a name see if we can uh, do something with that Trying to get rid of me, will they? No, I didn't mean to go for the gate. So, is it all taken care of? Not yet, dear. Slacker. I'm going in again. Yeah, 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 there we go. We need to get her to knock again. Hello, Joey. What do you... I need... Hmm. It better be... I need you to... Sir. Another visitor. Oh, you again. <laughs> You're not in a building, lady. What are you talking about? We're on the ground. We're outside. You, sir, need glasses. Look at the door. It says D, clear as day. It says D, clear as day. You're not in a building, lady. What are you talking about? We're on the You look at... I'd like to ask you... Look, I'm not... Who are... Uh. I was sent by your landlord. Oh, you were? Yep, he wanted me to ask you a few questions. Well, for your information, I don't have a landlord. I own this apartment. You're not fooling me. You're mm. one of them, aren't you? One of them? Who is them? I told you all the only way you can drag me out of here is as a corpse. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, so we've got D on D, so we know that. Hang on, if we... 
We're on a third floor apartment D. I can't make heads or Oh, Fool might be able to get. That looks profoundly youth. Well, with the blueprints, we will get a name if you look at the apartment 3D, but nope. Turns out not. They want to fight? I'll give them one. Let's, uh, oh. Heard a clink from my so water bottle. New friend? Oh, just dandy. Uh, right. Let's, uh, search for that name that we got. Mrs. Harriet Sherman. Got her. There's a phone number, but no address. Let's try it. Hello. Is this Harriet Sherman? Who is this? My name is Lauren. Who is this? What do you want? What are you talking about? I could really use your help. Help? Why should I help you? Why should I help anybody? Nobody's ever done me any favors. Goodbye. Don't call back. Oh, shush. Come on. Yeah, Jesus. There we it's go. Me again. You? I thought I told you not to call. Yeah, I know. Please, just listen. I was hoping I could help you. What? Yeah, the voice is awesome. You're selling something? <laughs> no, I'm. I've told you a million times. No, I don't need any insurance. I'm not. Gotta go. My stories are off. Don't call back. I like how this Wait. is just like. <laughs> The, uh, the most stereotypical old person in history. We're gonna keep calling Harriet. Hello? It's me again. You? I thought I told you not to call. Yeah, I know. Please, just listen. I'm calling from Seagram Realty. Ooh. Why Ooh. did you say? You've got Why my did you say? Um, yes. Yes, I do. But before I give it to you, I have to ask you a couple of questions. Fine, fine, fine. Come on by and I'll answer whatever you want. 24 Rector, down in Battery Park City. Just buzz up. So, Joey. Oh, yeah. what did you say, sir? Sorry, left my wallet in my other pants. Probably the pair I was buried in. Well, we got a lead. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Better than nothing. It's open. It's the most old person kitchen. apartment ever. Harriet? Mrs. Sherman, if you don't mind. <laughs> you from Seagram Realty? Yes. Have you got my money? I wanted to ask you a few questions first. You're welcome to ask me anything. Look at the little like. doggy After you give me the money. You got it? Um no. I thought so. Just another scam artist. Get out of here. And don't come back without the dough you skin flints owe me. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, um. Oh, I need, the, I need the money. I don't remember how to get it. Sorry, I'm looking at a guide right now to make so I remember where to get the money. Uh. Ah, there we, we do have money at home, apparently. There should be somewhere. Do we move out of the way? There it is. Hmm. The rainy day phone. Things I'll do for a case. There we go. Now we got the dosh. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. You got Harriet's and Harriet's hard earned money. Or so I think. It's open. Mrs. Sherman? Hello again. You 
got my money this time. Yes, sure we do. do. It's about time. It's about it time. God, I love the voice acting in this game so much. Here you go. <laughs> hmm. It's all here, sure enough. I'd say thanks if I hadn't had to fight tooth and nail to get it. What teeth, you old bat? Don't worry about it. Well, I won't. <laughs> now, you wanted to ask me something? So tell me about yourself. Me? What do you want to know? Your name came up during an Why investigation. Why do you want to know? Investigation? Don't you work for Seagram Realty? Not exactly. Ah, you just use them as a way to get to me, huh? Yes. Is that a problem? Oh, not at all. <laughs> just don't expect your money back. She's all heart. <laughs> well, we do have some stuff we can ask you about. Do you know any reporters from the New Yorker magazine? Reporters? No. Do you know anything about a strange old woman wandering the streets? <laughs> Funny you mentioned that. Oh. Really? I once saw a strange old woman wandering the hallway back in the old building. I yelled at her to leave, and she did. Mm. I doubt that she was the one you're looking for, though. The world is full of strange old ladies, not unlike myself. We do like strange old ladies, but not the ones who murder people. What can you tell me about the construction site on 53rd Street? You've been there? How's the old place looking? It's a big hole in the ground. Ha! Can only be an improvement. <laughs> I used to live there. Then I like this really dame. bought it and tore it down. Going to build something new and fancy, no doubt. Something modern. They kicked you out of your own home? No big loss. <laughs> yeah, self-aware. The place was a dump. Plus, they wanted it so badly that they paid most of us a monthly stipend just to leave. Pretty generous, actually. I can almost forgive them for nearly robbing me. So they paid you money to leave? Yup. Like I said, it was a pretty generous deal. Building was about to be condemned anyway. So everyone was grateful for the offer. Well, everyone except for Mavis Wilcox. Mmm. Mavis Wilcox. Who is Mavis Wilcox? A lunatic is what she was. She lived down the hall from me, so I know how crazy she was. Why was she crazy? She refused to leave is why. Seagram was the little her doggy. Fortune, but still she refused. Dog. Look at the dog. Why did Mavis refuse to leave? She was a lunatic. I believe I already established this. A total shut-in. The prospect of leaving her little apartment terrified her. I'm old and feeble. If I could manage the move, she could have. Of course, it doesn't matter now. Did they ever get Mavis to leave? Oh, you could say that. Yes, you could definitely say that. She left all right. Left the entire world, in fact. <laughs> you mean she died? <laughs> yes. I just Someone love how captive she is. choked her to death. Right in the apartment she loves oh, so God. much. <laughs> I'd call it ironic if it weren't so tragic. I feel that this game really is like, it's a, there's a lot of obviously kind of dark humor in this game because it's a, it's a game about death. Uh, it's a series about death. But in this game in particular, it's so... Oh, I don't know, it's so blunt. Um, which I like, I like that this, because I think it, it fits in with how Rosangela is still very much like sort of early in the game. She's She hasn't really gone jaded yet, whereas Lauren is super jaded, so it makes sense that the game reflects that. But it does sort of get like, we've had two people now speaking as if someone getting horribly murdered, one of them a homeless person, and one of them murdered in her own home, as if, like, that's a kind of a funny anecdote. Did they ever find out who killed Mavis? No. Some street kid, most likely. Some Thought street the toughs. was empty and went in to steal whatever was left over. Didn't count on anyone being there. Bumped into Mavis, then had to kill her. Happens all the time. <sighs> How well did you know Mavis? Like I said, I lived just down the hall from her, on the third floor. I didn't know her well, but she did get some mail just before they smashed the place up. 
I took it, just in case a relative or something came looking. But it's been six months and nothing. Ooh. And it's, the thing is, this game is very sad. Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? Just that she lived on the third floor with me. There's nothing else. All right. Do you still have Mavis's things? Yes, I do. Such as they are. There wasn't much, just that envelope on the counter. Could I look at it? You knew Mavis? Sort of, yes. Well, you might as well take a look at them. Nobody else has come looking. It also feels very much like old lady to have a thing yes. on the counter for five months. Uh, did we have no? We asked about everything else. Goodbye, Are we going to say hello? Don't goodbye. Mention. Goodbye to Harriet for now. I think we might be coming back later. Uh, but let's return. There's not much in here. Just a photograph and a letter. Having stuff on the counter for a long time. Well, yeah, it is. I do. Uh, but it feels very much like old person of just leaving stuff for ages and ages uh, as they were. That's her. That's oh. the ghost at the construction site. So our ghost's name is Mavis Wilcox. I'd bet the farm on it. Right, we've got... And she seems to be a mom as well. Mrs. Wilcox, thank you for agreeing to speak with me the other day. As promised, I'm returning the photograph you lent me. All the best, Jay Mitchell. Ooh, it's our old friend Joe. Uh, maybe we should go speak to Joe before we carry on. We're entertaining him a yes. lot today. I'm becoming downright popular. Come in, have a seat. <clears throat> Do you know Mavis Wilcox? Miss Wilcox? Yes, I remember her. Lived up town a ways before she died. How did you know her? I wanted to write a piece about her, so I met her for a spell. Interesting woman. How did you know her? I'm looking into her death. I see. So what can you tell me about Mavis? I get the impression she didn't get out much. That's an understatement. I got in touch with her through a colleague who was covering that demolition. I wondered what made a woman like that tick, so I made an appointment to meet with her. What was she like? A very gracious woman. Brought me in, made me a cup of tea, showed me pictures of a family. All in all, it was a pleasant way to spend an afternoon. What happened to her? Killed, so they say. Was found mm. choked to death in her own apartment. Any thoughts on who did it? Well, there were rumors that the labor union decided to take matters into their own hands, as it were. But I doubt that. The police ruled it was some squatter or drifter or something, and left it at that. And what do you think? Me? I have no theory. Why did you want to write about her? I found her fascinating. She was asked to leave. She was begged to leave. She was even offered lots of money to leave. But she kept refusing. She was too scared. I had to know why. And what did you discover? That, Miss Blackwell, is the eternal question. I've spoken to hundreds of people over the years. Most of them were odder than Mavis. It's impossible to decipher the whys and the hows. As time went on, I've contended myself just with the what's. Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? I'm afraid I've told you everything. Do you know anything about a strange old woman wandering the streets? I've met plenty of strange old women, Miss Blackwell. Some stranger than others. Can you give me some more details? She calls herself the Countess. Mr. Mitchell? I'm thinking. No. I can safely say I've never set eyes on this woman. I'm sorry. Hmm. So tell me about yourself. I beg you. Tell me. Yeah, I hope you. I'm afraid. We did that already, I think. I'd like to read your piece about Mavis. I'm afraid I no longer have it. Do you know what issue it was in? I'd like to look it up. I never published it. I was going to, but then Mavis died, and it just seemed wrong somehow. I don't even have the rough cut. heard up before. I'm sorry. I think that's all for now. All right. You have a good night now. Uh, right, let's head back. Speak to Mavis. We've got a name now. Uh, switch to Joey. I'm going in again. Yeah, yeah we know, we know. We're getting close to cracking this mystery. Oh, we need to do the thing, don't we? Hello, Joey. What I hmm. It better be. I need you to knock us. 
Getting close to cracking ass. I'm popular today. Oh, you again. <laughs> I'd like to ask you some. Look, I'm not the who are. It's me, your son. Sam? Yep. That's Sam. Me. Sam, it's been so long. Look at you. Yeah, look at me. Sorry, I was so rude. I almost didn't recognize you. Come on in, Sam. I'll make you dinner. Uh, no, I, I can only stay for a minute. I have some questions I need to ask you. Of course, Sam. There we go. Go name. Uh. So, Mom, how's it going? Oh, you know me, Sam. It's tough living here on my own, but I get by. Yeah, I can see that. Listen, Mom, I need you to think very carefully. What's the last thing you remember? What do you mean? Answering the door and seeing you, of course. And before that? Nothing. You know nobody comes here. Except for the grocer, sometimes. And that... That who? Nobody. Hmm. Mom, look around carefully. Are you sure that you're? We don't want to. We don't want to so spook her so much. Look at the door. It says D. Clear as day. Have you been talking to a reporter from the New Yorker? Yes, such a nice man. He came over and talked to me for a bit. I liked him. He listened to me. What did you talk about? Oh, this and that. Don't know why you were so interested. So, tell me more about yourself, Mom. Sam, since when did you become so interested? Just trying to get to know you better. Well, isn't that sweet? But I honestly don't know what to tell you. So, what can you tell me about me? You're so confusing, Sam. Never mind. You're so confusing, Sam. How's Dad, Mom? Oh, Sam, you know that your father is dead. John Durkin died years ago. Oh, we got a name though. We got a name Sorry. though. So, Mom, how are my brothers and or sisters? <laughs> and That's or sisters. Not funny, Sam. You know you're an only child. Right. Just checking. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go now, Mom. I'll come back to visit you soon. Sure, Sam. It's been a John Durkin, presumably her husband or partner is dead but she do she does have a son so let's um that broad really hacks me off you should try flowers next time we can see if we can find anything about him so sam wilcox or sam durkin <laughs> yeah real smooth real smooth joey who does have his moments when he's impersonating a dead woman's son. Right, so we're gonna go Sam, I believe Sam Wilcox first. Hmm, there's no listing. Interesting. But, but... Hmm, there's no listing. Oh. I thought for sure that would work. But... If we look in the picture... This kid doesn't look too happy to be with Mavis. He's wearing a Columbia University sweatshirt. That's her. I think that's it. So we've got we've got Columbia to go on. Columbia uh, University. Columbia I can spell. University. Here's the number. There we go. To Sam, please. Do you have a last name, ma'am? Of course I do. It. Oh. Crap. Joey, what's the kid's name? You're asking me? No, I don't know his last name. Then I forgot to do it. Do. do you want me to try somebody else? Uh, I don't think so no, anyway. I don't think there's any reason we need to go and connect. If that John else. Durkin was Sam's father, it's only logical that Sam's last name would be Durkin. 
So there we go. Now we can do it again. Sam Durkin listed? Sam Durkin, yes. Hold, please. There we go. Durkin. Is this Sam? Yeah. Who's this? My name is Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping to ask you a few questions about your mother. Oh. Questions, huh? Yeah. All right. I'll bite. How do you know my mom? Um... Was her neighbor. You used to live in that dump? Yeah. And you knew Mavis? Very well. You actually talked to her? Yeah, all the time. Where, in the hallway? Why all the questions? Because I don't believe you. Whether you believe me or not, it can't hurt to talk to me. Maybe. Maybe not. But if you knew her, you know what apartment number she was in. I would. We do she, know what apartment she number she was in. She damn place. So what was it? So maybe you did know her. Thank you. Third floor so apartment. What do you want to know about her? What do you know about her death? It was suicide. She killed herself? Not literally, but it was like she chose to die. She had every opportunity to leave. They were gonna pay her and find her a new place and everything. I tried to get her out, but that's my mom. She couldn't be dragged out of that dump by anybody or anything. Do you know who killed her? She was killed by some junkie, wasn't she? So they say. You think different? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, good luck to you. How close were you with your mother? Close. Think of the farthest place you can and add another 10,000 miles. That's how close we were. Mm. The woman wasn't a mother, just crazy on wheels. Oh dear, Did not too ever good. Leave her apartment? Never. Not once in the last 15 years. You don't seem upset by her death. Upset? Sure, she was my mom. But am I gonna lose sleep? No. She drove my pop out of the house and into an early grave. I once thought I'd follow in his footsteps, but not anymore. The woman didn't go anywhere, never did anything. She was killing me just by existing. Mm. Now I feel like I can breathe again. That's Ooh. the truth. What was it like living with her? You kidding? I lived with my pop. After three years of marriage, he had enough. Glad he had the sense to take me with him. And after your father died? I got by. You never visited your mother? Yeah, I visited her on Mother's Day, if that's what you want to know. Even got her a present once. Really? Wow, yeah, once. Good it did. <laughs> what did you give your mom for Mother's Day? I don't think that's any of your business, lady. It's been years. Just dust in the ground now. Bye, Sam. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Well. We got something. Uh, no. The uh, now I think we're gonna Come on, speak. Let's get out of here. Right behind you, Mr. Mitchell, once again. Yes. I'm becoming darn right popular. Come in, have a seat. Down, right popular. Yes, you are. Do you know anything about John Durkin, Mavis's ex-husband? Oh yeah, she did talk about him. Broke her heart, she said. I know they divorced very early in the marriage, and he died several years later. But I'm afraid I know nothing else. Well. Do you know anything about Sam, Mavis's son? I'm afraid not. Mavis discussed her son and seemed proud of him. But I don't think they see each other. I've never met the boy myself. Did Mavis ever mention a gift or present from her son? Now that you mention it, yes. She showed me a leather-bound edition of mm. Alice in Wonderland and said it was from her son. Alice in Wonderland? Yes, by Lewis Carroll. Yeah, I've heard of it. Well, there we go. I think that's all for now. All right. You have a good night now. Well, thank you very much. You too. Right, I think we we might just have enough. We're gonna go and see her again. I'm going in again. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we've been through this. It's not our first rodeo. Right, so knock on the gate. Hello, Joey. What are you doing? I need you. Hmm. It better be. I need you to knock on the gate again. Sure. My, I'm pop. Yes, we've done oh, this. Hello, Sam. <clears throat> Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. Do you have that present I gave you? Which present was that? The book, Alice in Wonderland. Of course I still have it. It was the only Mother's Day gift you ever bought me, Sam. Can I see it? Whatever for. Come on, Ma. I just want to see it. Sure, Sam. It's right on the table. Great. Uh, why don't you bring it out here? You mean, pick it up? Yeah. yeah. Pick it up and bring it over. Pick it up. Go sure, for it. You can I do can it. Pick it up. Oh! Oh no! What? The book is gone! Gone, huh? <laughs> Imagine that. Somebody stole it! Sam, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> Question her mothering ability. Oh no. It's okay, Mom. Okay? Okay? I lost your gift! You can't pick up the book because it's not there. Sam? The book's not there, and neither is the table, right? What? Think! The book's gone, the table's gone, the whole room is gone. Shame. Sam, you're awful! I'm upset and I'm sorry. Don't make it worse, please! You need to find that book, Mom. I don't know if I can love a mother who loses my gifts. <laughs> you don't mean that. I mean it, Mom. You need to tell me where the book is. But I don't know where to look. The only thing you've ever given me. Maybe it's out here, Mom. In the hallway? Sure, in the hallway. Yeah, I'm sure it's out here. Come on out and help me look. Oh, okay, Sam. But only for you. I... I still, I still don't, don't see, see it anywhere. Let's try further down, Mom. I'm, I'm outside. Yeah, I knew you could do it, Mom. Mom? Sam? Sam, Sam where are we? we? I'm, I'm scared. scared. I'm right here. Mom, I need you to do something. What? Turn around. I can't. Sure you can. Just turn around and look behind you. Oh, where's the building? Where's my apartment? Where's my home? It's gone! Those bastards, they tore it down! You, you made me leave and they tore it down! Hey, calm down. I've got nothing now. Mom. I am not your mother. You are not my son. My son hates me. All I had left was my home, and then, then I, oh, God. Yeah, the whooshing sound of acceptance. Are you happy now? You couldn't just leave me there. You had to bring me out. You had to make me remember. I'm sorry. It's horrible. Being dead, it's horrible. You get used to it. I, I don't want to feel like this anymore. Everything is so dark and cold can i go home now sure sure i can take you home just hold on to this time for this again Over to you kid right now if you remember in the first game uh, there was a comment about lauren oh my God. um Nervous? fainting in the middle of the street in the middle of night that's what ha dies I just now. Go home. Please, can I go home? I think that's the only home you've got now. I'm sorry. What a legacy. Husband gone and dead. My son hates my guts. My home is gone. My life over. I remember that. It's very sad, dying. this whole thing. That old woman choking me. Old woman? She just came in and killed me. She said she was going to help me. The light, Mavis. Just head towards it. And then... I don't know. I'm scared, but it feels right somehow. Oh, 
John, Sam, I'm so sorry for everything. I wish I could feel sorry for you, but I don't feel much of anything anymore. Best of luck, wherever you are. Yeah, she was just like a lonely, lonely old woman. You all right? Yeah, fine. I'm exhausted. Speaking Bye, of old right? women. Sounds good to me. You. <laughs> like clockwork. You saved her. Yeah, sure we did. No thanks to you. We've got some questions for you, lady. Why did you kill Isaac and Mavis? I didn't kill them. I'm like you. You're nothing like us. We don't kill. I help spirits into the next world, like you. You mean you're a medium? Yes. But you can't be. I am like you. Wait, no. This doesn't make any sense. Why are you killing people? I save people. I don't hurt them. Get back here, stupid old hag. Let's get after her. <laughs> She's gonna outrun us yet again. God damn it. Your nose okay? That lamppost should not have been there. <laughs> well, third cigarette of the night. I'm not moving. <laughs> Kill the old lady problem gone. So not the gatekeep, but stop murdering people. <laughs> So she, look, she's just girl bossing. Like it's like, phone. I don't know I why you hate women out. succeeding, well, okay? Let's chat for a while. Brainstorm a bit. Maybe we'll come up with something. She's a medium like me. It makes no sense. <laughs> it does yeah, make making sense. them dead first is cheating. She's that is sort of skipping the middleman. The only way she could see me is if she was a medium like you. Why would a medium kill? Maybe she doesn't think of it as killing she did say she helped people, she saved them. By killing them? Maybe she felt they were better off dead? I don't think so. Mavis and Isaac were sad mixed up people, but they didn't deserve to die. Maybe she thinks otherwise. This is embarrassing for you. Yeah, not a good look, sweaty. That's a yikes from me. I'm unfollowing now because I I thought you were you were cool before, but I, that I didn't realize that you were murdering people with impuni. Is she my future? What do you mean? Oh, Fia is here. Woman, the Countess, or whatever she's called. Is that what happens Hello. to mediums when they get old? I I don't know, darling. I really don't. But I won't let that happen to you. You have my word on that. Some hobbies are problematic. Fia is problematic too. I think he's found himself in a low bind. Because he didn't expect that I was going to hold him like a baby. He's the, he's the sweetest. Yep, you can go now. You can go now. All the smoking in this game is really making it difficult in my writing journey. Oh, really? I'm Sorry about that. Sorry about the smoking distracting you. Come on. Theo, get your butt out of my face. Uh, if she's a medium, where is her spirit guide? You know, I wondered that myself. Ah, uh, quitting! Ah. The Countess, or whoever she is, doesn't have that. Or at least none that we can see. Is it possible to be a medium without a guide? I don't think so, sweetheart. That's one thing I'm sure of. Medium and guide. That's how it works. Yeah, because I was thinking, I thought you were thinking like thinking about smoking you were you were writing and thinking about smoking was distracting you from writing but yeah that makes more sense what could have happened to her spirit guide i don't know i thought you couldn't leave my side i know either her spirit guide managed to escape or or what or it was killed is that possible i don't know i don't think i want to know so what could her connection be i don't know something has to connect her to the spirit world it's not another ghost or we would see it. So it must be something else. Something that has a connection to everything we've well, seen. Well, what do you someone? think that's going to be? Yeah, that's it. The Countess connects these two cases. There has to be something or someone else yes, that has yes, the same connection. Yes, yes, we all know what it is. Joseph it's Joseph Mitchell. Mitchell. Bingo. The reporter? How could he have this kind of power? 
I don't know how he got the power, but it all fits. He wrote about both Mavis and Isaac, and the Countess killed both of them. He seems like the best candidate. But it doesn't make any sense. Think about it. You're a medium. What is it that mediums do? Listen to misogynistic ghosts all day. Ha ha. Look, I'm trying to be serious for once. We help spirits into the next world. Exactly. A medium needs a guide. Hers is gone. Somehow Mitchell fills in the gap. Our Countess is being told through Mitchell's writing to help certain spirits into the next world. It's not her fault they're still alive. You mean... I think you get the picture. Oh god, that's sick. It makes sense though. How is this possible? There's only one way to find out. It's time we paid our friend Mitchell one more visit. Yeah, we're gonna speak to Joe Mitchell once more. Uh, I like the way that one of the things that uh, I like about What Jedi, I, what Jedi's games um, is the way that they weave in uh, New York history into it. And Joseph Mitchell, uh, as a writer, he wrote for the New Yorker, but what he what he specialized in was these kind of character portraits of just interesting people in the city. The uh, the book that I'm reading, which is a collection of those. You know, we ha there is a story about the oldest Irish pub in New York. There's a story about uh, an old cinema that is run by uh, a lady who let homeless people in for free. You know, so like all these like eccentric characters are sort of part of old New York. Uh, and having him in this game, I think, is interesting because there's it, uh, there's that connection to uh, the old New York, the sort of round the world wars type New York. Uh, and he's going to be coming back in the series again. Uh, but we're going to. But before we uh, get ahead of ourselves, we're going to go speak to him one more time. Because he's got some explaining to do. Yes? Miss Blackwell. Hello again, Mr. Mitchell. I was just about to head home. Oh, I'll just be a second. Well, if you insist, do have a seat. Yeah, we do insist. Thanks, but I'd rather stand. Go on, let him have it. Mind if I smoke? Well, actually... Thanks. <laughs> Miss Blackwell, my patience is wearing thin. My family is waiting for me. Tell me what you want. You finished your writing for the day, Mr. Mitchell? Yes, yes I have. And now I'm going home. He's full of hot air. The page is blank. You haven't written anything today, have you? Why do you say that? The paper is blank. What? H how do you know that? I have exceptional eyesight. There's dust. Don't forget the dust. And there's dust on the typewriter. Well, can't contradict you there. So? So, I don't think that's any of your business, Miss Blackwell. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Mitchell, two people are dead. <laughs> girl so boss. Dead. You wrote about both <laughs> I should have like a girl yes, boss alert. You don't find anything suspicious about that. I've written about hundreds of people over 30 years. The fact that two of them happen to be dead does not surprise me. It's just a coincidence. Funny thing about my life, Mr. Mitchell? If something looks like a coincidence, it normally isn't. Well, I hate to disappoint you. Ooh, look at the sweat on this guy's brow. And he ain't lying, I'm dying. So to speak. When I'm getting a stream deck, I should set up one of the alerts to be like girl boss alert. When, when we get some girl boss in, the, in one of these you games. You aren't a very good liar. And you are poking your nose into things you don't understand. You'd be surprised at what I understand, Mr. Mitchell. Try me. Who are you, anyway? You come in... <laughs> out of <the> exactly. <laughs> and bring like up a DJ horn. All, this. all of what? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I write about people and they die. Can you understand that, can you? My whole life I've been driven to write about people. Now I kill them instead. Why is this happening? I think it's a penance of some kind. I've shared the intimate details of people's lives with the world. Perhaps I revealed one secret too many. I don't think about it anymore. I just come to work like nothing's wrong. Everyone's been very polite so far, but I'm sure the ball will drop someday. You've done nothing wrong. There's a woman called the Countess. She kills whoever you write about. A Countess killing people that I write about. That's a tall story, and that's a lot to take in. Why would she do something like that? How did this happen? Probably because of your connection to humanity. I don't know. You said probably, so you're not sure? Not as such, no. 
Well then, I appreciate you trying, but I'd prefer if you left well enough alone. Don't you want to write again? Oh yes, but people are safe as long as I don't write about anything real. I've always wanted to try a hand at fiction. Had a story in my head for years. I'll probably give it a whirl, see how it goes. But no more deaths. Not on my watch. I'm trying to help you. And I never ask for it. People die when I write. So, I don't write. The problem's solved. You're not a murderer, Mr. Mitchell. No, I'm not. Five years back, I tried to write about a man. An old man in a bar. He was killed the next day, choked to death. I didn't think anything of it at the time. Then I wrote about another man, Mr. Isaac Brown. You know him. He died the same way. Still figured it was just a coincidence. But then it happened with Mavis Wilcox. For the third time in a row. No, I didn't kill them. Not on purpose. But if I wrote a fourth time, that would be murder. Plain and simple. I can't leave it alone, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, rest assured, you can. You seem like a capable young lady, and I'm sure you think you know what's what, but I don't want any more deaths on my conscience. Don't you want to help? There's a killer out there. Who only kills people I write about. So I stop writing about people. Problem solved. If you won't help me, I'll have to go to the police. Oh, and tell them what? All those deaths, all killed the same way, so soon after you met them, I'm sure they'd be interested in that information. More girl boss. Is that right? Well, I'd be careful if I were you. Careful? I'm not without defenses, if you know what I mean. Is that a threat? Are you threatening to write about me? I didn't say anything. You know what? Go right ahead. What do you mean? You want to write so bad? Write about me. Dust off that typewriter and get to work. Knock yourself out. Listen, I spoke out of turn. I didn't honestly mean. Hell with that. Just do it. Hey, this is dangerous. I know what I'm doing. I can't do it. Like hell you can't. You've been writing for how long? 30 years? More? I know you can do it. I want to meet this thing head on. It's the only way. Do it. You don't know what you're asking. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> you could die. Oh. <laughs> is that all? But. Quiet. Sass. I do love her I was though. born in Troy. <laughs> Upstate New York. My mother's name was Patricia. My father. You getting this stuff down? Theo, you're coming back. Back for the finale. Well, is indeed. I hope now we just gotta wait. I'm never happy. Theo. You little tiny beautiful baby. We're supposed to be a team. You can't make this kind of decision without asking me first. Button it, Joey. If this broad's a medium like me, then I have some questions for her. If I'm gonna end up like that, I wanna know. And if she kills you for your trouble? Well, then I won't have to worry. And what happens to me, huh? You <laughs> die with the heck I'm, I'm to gonna you. get a Ralph we'll emote at some to point. Do you see a good picture of him? He's hard to photograph. It's not about that. Maybe you'll end up with my baby brother. Exactly. I'm sure you guys will I mean, she's only right. killed three people yeah, with her bare hands. When do you think she'll get here? I don't know. I and she's routinely right. outrun she us this am. night, so. How can you feel that? I just do. She was right. She's like me. Maybe mediums call out to each other. There's a rookie numbers, yeah. You gotta pad your stats a little bit. So, any thought on how to handle her? Nope, not a one. I just want to talk to her. Well, she can see and hear me. So I can help. You're not alone. Yeah. You understand? You're not alone. I'm tired, Joey. I'm so tired. All right. I'll just leave you to it. Yeah. Oh. She's here. So polite of her to knock. All right. Here we go. Now this bit is a little bit, a uh, little bit grim. I, I know you. So a little yes. bit of a fair warning. You know me. Come in. I'm watching you. So, what's your story? I want to help you. Help me, huh? You're in pain, lost, 
I can help. Confident I can beat a old lady. Well, good. Thank you. If I ever need you to. Glad, glad to know that I can. Uh, Who are you? I can count I on you for that. Countess. I am the Countess. The, God, the spirit God. I still feel her. She is gone, but not completely gone. What do you mean? Kid, her mind is snapped. She's not going to make any sense. Yes, she snapped my mind. She went away and my world expanded. I see everything. Everything. It hurts. You're bonded with Joseph Mitchell. Is that his name? The guide who is not a guide? Yes, the non-guide. He speaks to the world. He spoke to me. He tells me what to do. Oh, he is so often silent. It's been years since I heard his voice. But tonight, I heard him. He told me to help you. He didn't tell you that. Why else would I be here? I... I'm here Hello. to help you. You're here to kill me. No! Come I don't on. Get, I will set you free. Hey, watch Stop it, skipping lady. dialogue lines. <laughs> Who was your spirit guide? She had a name. I no longer know. I wish I knew. I cannot think. Not without her. Why did she leave? Why? Where is your spirit guide now? I don't know. Her voice is gone. I'm lost. I found that other voice. But he is so quiet. You mean Mitchell? The true guide. She is gone. Gone. How did she lying on myself? I don't know. She found a way. Why did she do that? Were you like me before your spirit guide went away? Like you? You know, sane. Joey. I was happy. I was smaller. Saw the world in muted colors. And there was music. Sweet music. We helped people. It felt good. Now she is gone. Now I help people, but it feels bad. Will I become like you? Please tell me. That's all I want to know. You? You are loved. Loved? Loved by who? You are in pain, my child. Let me help you. This is this is setting up a lot of stuff that we're going to dig into slowly across the next three games as well. Yeah, we love a little house pan for around here, don't we? I'd like to help you instead. Help me? I need no help. You need to be free. Hey. Hey. Oh, there we go. There go, you old witch. Damn it. I so, can't do anything. But we Fight have one thing to do. Fight back. Fight back, damn you. Well, we have one thing we can do. Right. That is grim. That's what happens when you mess with us. Stay away from her. No, oh. he needs my help. Hey, you want to help someone? Why don't you help me? You want to free a spirit? Well, I'm the real McCoy. You? Yeah, that's right. Come and save me. I'm right here. I... Wait. I'm supposed to help her. Right. I'm waiting. I'll save you. So now we gotta be a little bit tricksy. We gotta move backwards slowly. I'm in pain. What are you gonna do about it? I can help you. We move away one step at a time. Must well, step. You're past your prime. I don't think you can handle it. You. We're gonna lead her out. Come on, then make with the saving. You need me. Come on, take me to the place with the bright light. I can help you. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? I... I want to help you. Why won't you let me help you? Uh, jo Joey? Uh, here we go. Here we go. I'm sorry. I can't look, is she? Yeah. There's no... No ghost. She's gone. Gone.
Yeah, that did get dark. I killed her. It was either her or you, darling. You made the right choice. Did I? What if, what if that's me one day, huh? What if I'm old and confused and alone? You won't be alone. I'll make sure of that. You say that now. But look at her. Her guide was gone. I can't speak for the future, kid. Maybe someday we'll meet someone like her, and then maybe we'll find out more. But right here, right now, I'm here, and I'm staying put. That's something, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it's something. This is a bad idea. You don't need to do this. Hello? Hi. Jack? Lauren? Sis, is that you? Yeah, Jack. It's me. Where have you been? It's not important. I miss you. Tell me about your life, Jack. How's Maria? When's the wedding? This is a really bad idea. But there we go. That's the end of it. And we could say it's a bittersweet ending, but we know where this ends. <laughs> um, but now we've seen uh, Lauren's story. How she comes to get back in touch with her family and how that she ends up uh, taking care of Rosangela. Who we will rejoin re with in the next uh, entry, and I, I forget the order they're in, but I believe the next entry is Blackwell Convergence, which I think will get started on, on Wednesday. We'll let the credits roll uh, while I take a look and make sure, see who we're going to raid. Who we got going? Uh, well, there are a couple of people. <laughs> there are a couple of people who are um, playing Delta Rune, and I don't want people to uh, be spoiled on that. If you uh, like me, haven't played it yet, which I do need to do. Well, yeah, the first. I would say the first three of them are short. The fourth one and the fifth one, they're full length games. Um, so I think we might be able to play the third one in one sitting as well. And remember, this game was meant to be a part of the third one, so this, that's why this one is a little bit shorter. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna rejoin, we're gonna find out more about Lauren, we're gonna rejoin Rosangela, we're gonna find out more about Joseph Mitchell, and we are actually gonna find out more about the Countess. Um, so there is a lot of stuff that we've been introduced to here, that is all gonna come back, and we're, there is so much more to learn about all these interesting people. Um, I'm now... I think I'm going to throw you over to Missy Kari, who is playing Cloudpunk, which is an amazing little game. Uh, I will do that over here, so I don't need to break. Uh, oh, and before that, I should also put, if you want to join the Discord, if you haven't already, uh, you can do so with the link that I'm now putting up in chat. Uh, and we're gonna... There we go. Right. Thank you all so, so much again for watching. This has been the second episode of our Blackwell series epic full series playthrough. Uh, we're going to return with... Uh, real ugly. We're going to return with uh, Blackwell Convergence on Wednesday. In the, during this game, Lawrence smoked 20 cigarettes and Joey was hit five times by the Isaac saxophone. Um, but until then, thank you all so, so much. I will see you next time. Yes. I'll see you next time. Uh, have a lovely rest of your evening, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.